I've had the Super Ute built and running strong for about nine months now, and I haven't quite settled on a really solid power system yet. I've been running different battery banks, which has been great and very versatile. However, I want something that just basically takes up a lot less room and is more integrated and a lot easier to charge. And behind me is my integrated battery system on my 2020 Tacoma. I have the Kickass BC DC charger, which takes input from my alternator, as well as solar, which is a remote system. I don't have a hard mounted solar panel on this rig. Now, what I really like about this system is that I have this little gold wing side door here and everything is very accessible. I can basically plug in all my stuff and it's just sitting out in the open. I don't have to climb in the back of the truck to do any charging station or like within my drawer system. It's just super convenient. And I use a Renergy battery monitor display to kind of keep track of all of my discharge and recharging of my 100 amp hour battery. The only thing that I did a little bit of a miss when I built this system was not doing an AC inverter. I wish I had put that in. Uh, it's not a huge issue. I run most of my charging and power supply on DC. However, there are a couple things that I have wished I had an AC inverter on. So one thing on this system on the Super Ute, I'm definitely gonna include. And after doing a lot of research and really taking my time to weed through all the different systems, this is what I settled on and it checks 90% of the boxes. This is a brand new kit from Renergy and there are some things that I really needed specifically for the Super Ute to be able to run a system. Let me explain. Everything starts off with this guy. This is a 200 watt rigid solar panel from Renergy and it's going to fit perfectly on top of the 230 Kabari XL. And moving down the system, the solar panel is gonna feed power into the Renogy solar charge controller. And this is really nice because they basically just really easily wire to each other, talk to each other, and there's no guesswork. This is gonna be a really easy install. And this right here is actually what turned me on to this entire system. This is a 100 amp hour lithium heated battery from Renogy, and it's a really small light package, which is gonna be great because when I put it in the side boxes, it's not gonna absorb a lot of space. And then of course, to finish off the last piece of the Renogy system is gonna be a 1000 watt inverter, which will give me all the AC power I could ever need. And best of all, there's a Bluetooth app within this inverter that actually will help me manage all of this and keep track of my charge and discharge status, which is gonna be great. So I really don't need to run a monitor. And the only component that's not within the Renogy family is going to be this DC outlet package kit from Nylite. It has three cigarette lighter ports and two USB ports. It's got a voltage meter and an on-off switch so I can turn it off when not in use. The Renogy kit also comes with all of the wiring, fuses, and instructions you will need to do this install. And the entire house battery system is gonna be installed right here within my Next Jump Outfitters all aluminum side boxes. And it's gonna be a really prime location because it's under the awning, so I have weather protection. I have my Las Vegas Overlanding bamboo cutting boards here for a prep surface. So now I can use my Stoke Voltaic electric cook system right off of that battery system. It's just gonna be a really good setup for not only charging batteries and power management, but also for cooking. It's just gonna be kind of a one system to do it all. Now, living up here in Montana, having that heated battery is absolutely essential to keep that lithium battery charging in those extreme cold temperatures, which is basically five months out of the year. We're gonna start this entire system top to bottom and work on the solar panel. I've got it flipped upside down here on the table and I've already pulled off both crossbars of the Kabari XL. Now the solar panel doesn't come with any kind of mounting hardware, so you're gonna have to find your own. By the way, I will have links to, in the description for all of these items that I'm installing, including whatever hardware that I used. I mean, obviously it's gonna be dependent on your install, but just, you know, if it helps out, it's there. After spending way too much time messing around with this, I found the best way to mount the solar panel to the 230 crossbars on the Kabari XL. It's gonna be a quarter 20 half inch bolt with a lock washer, a flat washer, and then into a quarter 20 T-nut specific to extrusion. Now I'm gonna insert the quarter 20 bolt, lock washer, and flat washer from the underside of the solar panel, put the T-nut on it, let it sit, then grab the crossbar, find the notch, and then insert the plate into the notch and slide it through. 
Now I'm gonna take my 11 mil wrench and tighten everything down. I got the solar panel situated back up here on the Kabari XL. And now I'm gonna do is mount the rack to the side of the tent. And then we're gonna run the wire back down to the side box over the front of the truck rack. Now mounting the panel here, I offset it to the driver's side just a little bit in case I ever want to do like a snowboard mount or some other kind of recovery board box or just something extra accessories. I have room to mount something else on these bars. It's not just a solar panel. I also mounted the panel directly to the bar specifically for height clearance. I wanted this to be as low as possible one for branches so the solar panels will get scratched up second for wind when driving that way there's the least amount of chance of this catching wind and starting to get pulled off of these bars and it came out really nice and low profile now i'm working with both of the solar panel cables as well as the inline fuse inline fuse hooks into the positive side of the terminal coming out of the solar panel and the two ends here that come out of the solar panel, I'm gonna hook into the cables. And then I'm basically gonna give myself a long run because the back of this tent just come up to about here. So I need to give myself enough slack that way it doesn't pull and cut anything while I set the tent up. Now I'm using a 5 8 drill bit and a 5 8 rubber grommet, and I'm gonna make a hole in the aluminum box here in the upper left corner. That way, all I'm doing is putting those two wires through and it should be pretty clean. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out exactly what configuration I want this all to be in. I have to have the inverter, I have to have the solar charge controller, here's my DC outlets, and then obviously my fuses. This all has to go on here and also these cables are very thick gauge cables so they're hard to kind of bend. So I need to make sure that everything is situated properly before I go put this in the truck. I got all the different components I'm gonna be using here on this piece of plywood that is gonna be mounted inside the next Jump Outfitters boxes. Now this doesn't look anywhere near as good as the bamboo plywood on my Las Vegas overlanding cutting boards. However, this is what I have, this is what's gonna to have to work. And trust me, it really bothers me that this Renogy is upside down. However, this is how I had to mount it because I didn't wanna deal with the plugs on this side. I wanted them on this side, just a little bit easier to access. So trust me, I wish that Renogy had put these bolts so that you could take this cover off and flip it so that it was oriented the proper way so I can read it. But however, this is what it's gonna have to be. Solar controller on this side, I have my three fuses here, and then my DC outlets all here in the bottom corner, which is gonna be great for charging. Unfortunately, I am gonna have to do some electrical work. I'm gonna have to cut these cables down. I have to cut down this big fat cable and then this cable here, and they're both the positives to add the inline fuses. So they're gonna cut out from the inverter to this fuse and then from the solar charger to this fuse here. All it's gonna do is just make my life a little bit easier not having to source cable. These are plenty long and cutting them down is just gonna be a pain, but it's not gonna be anything that I can't do with a little bit of tools and a little bit of time. I got all the positives hooked into the fuses and I started with the inverter because it is the thickest, most pain in the butt cable to work with. So I got that cut right here. I used heavy duty pliers to cut the cable. Then I used a razor blade to cut the sheathing back. And then I used a crimper on a battery terminal ring and I used the hydraulic crimper to get it nice and tight and then heat shrink over that to keep it looking good and keep it nice and secure. Then I did the exact same procedure to this side here, then moved up to the solar charger where a thinner cable, again, I cut it down right here, uh, put a ring on it, crimped it, and then put heat shrink over it. Did the same thing over here. Also, this cable right here is the only one that is black that is not identified red for positive. So what I did was I used red heat shrink here to remind me if I take it off that it goes back here on the red. And there's also heat shrink on the cable itself. That way I can identify when I go to hook everything up later on when I mount this in the truck to the battery and I make all the connections. I don't identify, I don't misidentify this as being negative because it's a black cable. I also did the same thing with the solar panel cable because they're both black. So I ran a red tubing down and basically put it near where the battery's gonna come out um, inside of the next jump outfitters box. And then over on the DC charger, I went through and I created a red cable, pulled it through, crimped it, put a ring on it, put it through this 20 amp uh, resettable fuse breaker and then routed it through. And what I did was I put holes in the wood. I wish I had put these holes just a little bit further out to make this break in the cable not so drastic. However, I did smooth the edges of that hole really well. So it should be totally fine. If there ever is an issue, I can always just um, ream this hole out and make it a little bit wider. However, I'm pretty confident it's gonna be totally fine. I really did radius the edges here so there's no sharp edge to cut the sheathing of that wire. Should be totally fine. 
I went through and I did a negative cable off the backside of the DC panel. I still have to go through and add the negative cable to both the solar charger and the inverter. And I'll do that when this is installed in the truck, that way I don't get too far ahead of myself and have a lot of cables to manage when I'm putting this in the truck. Now keep in mind, using anything outside of a battery bank like an All Powers, EcoFlow, DJI, any of those, it's all gonna be one compact package. When you're trying to do something like this, there's always gonna be a component of having to do some kind of wiring. Even this where it's pretty much included, you still have to add those fuses, so you still have to cut those wires or create short wires and kind of mold it to the way you want it. Like this is not gonna look this good if you were to basically use the cables at stock length and then get other cables to run out to your truck. So there is gonna be some manipulating of wiring. You're gonna to have to cut and crimp and heat shrink these wires to kind of create what you see behind me here. Not a big deal, but it is an investment in time, knowledge, and tools. So I have a bunch of tools here. My pole barn here looks like an electrician threw up in here. So I've just got stuff kind of everywhere, but I'm gonna go through just a little bit of what I used. And there's gonna be links to all of this in the description, as well as this entire energy system, along with whatever accessories else I threw in here. Uh, but this is gonna be a totally awesome kit that is totally worth the time and energy that you're going to invest into putting this in your rig. Day three is off to a great start. We got the panel completely installed. I was waiting for different spacers. So I needed two inches of space because of this DC panel. It needed two inches of clearance in the back. So I had to offset this panel by two inches for that clearance. And the spaces I got worked well. And now the thing is in here and it's really solid. I mean, this thing's not going anywhere. It's mounted in four points right to the aluminum box and dead solid. The next step is installing the battery. And I'm gonna use two of the bolts that hold the aluminum box to the flatbed. I'm gonna use those and put brackets on those to hold the battery down so it's super solid. And then we just gotta get into the wiring. I got the battery installed. I had to fabricate a couple brackets and then I used my roller cam strap, but this thing is in here really solid. Now I have to say that this is really the heart of this entire system. The real reason that I went with this battery was because of its size and because it's heated. Up here in Montana, you need that heated battery to be able to run it uh, all year round. Otherwise, in the wintertime, I would not be able to charge this because it's lithium and there is a temperature over and under that you can't work outside of. So this is a great package and it fits in here super great. Now I'm going to basically go through and start the wiring. So I'm going to hook up all the positives to the battery first, starting with the big thick cable here because it is the thickest and most difficult to work with. Let me explain the actual wiring because I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Basically, you have the positive and negative coming from the solar panel and it goes in this far left side of the solar charge controller. Then from the next two outputs, these go to the battery, positive and negative to the battery. So currently I have the positive coming out, going through the fuse breaker and then right into the battery. Also, the positive and negative off of the inverter go directly into the battery as well. Then there's also the positive and negative from the DC panel over here from Nylite that's gonna go back around and directly to the battery. So everything is going to the battery, except the inputs from the solar panel, they go into the solar charger. Everything else is straight to the battery and hopefully everything works great. So now I'm gonna hook up all of the negative terminals. And now there is power in this battery, so it might arc here and there, but it's not really gonna shock me. There's definitely a lot more power coming from the solar panel and into that solar charger. So I'm waiting to do those last. That way I'm not getting extra power into this system, even though it's a really cloudy day, the 200 watt panel is still gaining charge. I got the negatives all hooked into the battery. Right now it's a little sloppy. I haven't zip tied everything. I just wanna make sure that everything fits the way it's supposed to. And then I will go back when everything's completed and do some cable management, zip tie everything nice and tight. That way nothing rattles, moves around, has a chance to fray on something. Now, as soon as I hooked up the negative cable to the battery, everything turned on. So now I know that everything works, which is great. Now all I have to do is hook in the solar negative and the solar positive to the solar charger. And then this thing should be done. I got everything plugged in and it's working fantastic. I got the 110 Stoke Voltaic crock pot here plugged in and it's working great. And I also plugged my phone into the DC outlet and that works as well. Everything is working flawless. Final thoughts, this system is awesome. I love the way this came out. I would say it's an intermediate project. Took me about eight to 10 hours. It'd be a little bit less with, without video. And it was just a little bit of electrical knowledge, nothing serious, great instructions and in the booklets that come with it. 
So anyone can really do this in their garage at home. And for a price point of $760 just for the Renogy stuff and about 40 bucks in odds and ends that I picked up, including the Nylite DC panel and some a couple other, the fuse block and some other things. So right at that $800 price point, this thing is a steal. I mean, you can't touch a Red Arc uh, BC DC charger for 800 bucks. So this is a great, great system. Um, I'm definitely gonna use the bejesus out of it this summer. And honestly, if you don't want this entire system, this battery by itself is $285 and being as the small package, 100 amp hour and self-heated, that is an absolute steal for what these lithium ion batteries are going for right now. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, be sure to hit the thumbs up, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.